Hey everyone, today we're talking about graphing linear equations that are vertical or horizontal in slope intercept form, point slope form, and standard form. I'll give you step by step directions on how to graph each type of equation. We'll do eight examples together, which are shown here on the screen. Before we get started, subscribe to this channel to stay caught up on the latest math videos and tips. Press that like button below for good luck. Let's go. To graph horizontal and vertical lines, step one is just to recognize that you're drawing one of them. If there's only one variable in the equation, like just x or just y, you know you're drawing a horizontal or vertical line. Step two, if you just see an x, you know your graph will be a vertical line going up and down. If you just see a y, your graph will be a horizontal line, so going left to right. In this example, we have x equals 2, so we know it's going to be a vertical line. Step 3 is just to sketch it. No matter what the value of y equals, whether it's y equals 0 or y equals 3 or y equals negative 2, the x value will always equal 2. Conceptually, the graph of a linear equation shows visually all of the points that are solutions for the equation. So in this case, all of the points on this line here is a solution to the equation x equals 2. Next example, we still have the same steps. Step 1, I only see the variable y in our equation, and there aren't any x's, so we know that our graph will either just be a horizontal line or a vertical line. Step 2, since we just have the y variable, our graph is going to be horizontal or going from left to right. And step three is just to sketch it. So we know we have a horizontal line at y equals negative three. Conceptually, if you forget if it's making a horizontal or vertical line, you can actually start plugging in numbers. No matter what you plug in for x, you'll always get that y equals negative three. You'll start seeing the line of the graph. Let's connect the dots and here's our answer. To graph from slope-intercept form, the equation is written in the y equals mx plus b format. In slope-intercept form, you can easily find the slope, which is represented by the letter m. In our example, m equals 2, so we know already that our slope equals 2. You can also easily find the y-intercept, which is represented by the letter b. And in our example, b equals 3, so that's our y-intercept. Having your equation in slope-intercept form makes it pretty simple to draw the graph. Our first step here is just to plot the y-intercept. Like we talked about before, we know from just looking at the equation that b equals 3. This is actually telling us the y-intercept, which is the point where our line crosses the y-axis, is 0, 3. If you forget, the idea behind this is that when you plug in x equals 0 in the equation, you'll get that y equals 3. Step 2, use the slope to find the second point. Just like we talked about before, we know from just looking at the equation that m, or also known as the slope, equals 2. The definition of a slope is really just how steep your graph is. Imagine if you're biking up a hill and the slope is really big, that means the hill is really steep and hard to pedal up. When the slope is smaller or even negative, it'll be easier to pedal and even downhill when the slope is negative. Anyways, you'll hear a lot that the slope equals rise over run. In our example, our rise is 2 and our run is 1, since 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. To show you guys what rise and run means, we'll start at the point that we found in step 1, which is at 0, 3. Then we'll rise up by 2 and run to the right by 1. This is actually the location of our second point. Step 3 is the easy part, you've done all the hard work. Now that we have two points, let's just connect them using a ruler to complete the graph. And that's it, you've graphed this linear equation.
Let's try another example with a more complicated looking slope. Our first step here, again, is to just plot the y-intercept. And like we talked about before, we know from looking at the equation that b equals 2. So this is telling us that the y-intercept is 0, 2. Which makes sense because if you plug in x equals 0 in the equation, you'll get that y equals 2. Step two, use the slope to find the second point. We know from our equation that m, or also known as the slope, equals negative one over four. Going back to our bike analogy, one fourths is a pretty small number, so it won't be super steep. And now that we have a negative slope, it means we're going downhill. Anyways, so in our slope, which is rise over run, our rise is negative one, so let's go down by one. And our run, is four so let's go to the right by four this is our second point step three now for the easy part let's connect them and this is our graph to graph using point slope form the equations are written in this format where m still represents the slope but y1 and x1 actually represents a point on the graph, hence the name point slope form. Our first step here is to identify the point, which is x1 comma y1, and plot it. When you look at our example, we have x plus 2, which means that x1 equals negative 2. There's a negative because remember, in our formula, we have x minus x1, and in our equation, we have x plus two. If we look at the y, we have y plus one, so we know that y1 equals negative one. Step two, use the slope to find the second point. So just like in slope intercept form, we know that m equals the slope. So our slope is equal to positive three, which is pretty steep. And since it's positive, we know it's going uphill. Our rise is positive three and the run is positive one. From the point we found in our first step, we'll go up by three and right by one. This is our second point. Step three, let's connect them using a ruler. And now we have our graph. I'm going to throw you guys a curveball. This doesn't look like your typical point slope equation. We have the m value and the x1 value, but where's the y1? The y1 value seems to be missing, but it actually just equals zero. I mean, y minus zero is the same thing as y. For our first step here, to identify the point, we know that x1 equals one, and y1, as I just mentioned, equals zero. Step two, let's use the slope to find the second point. Our slope is equal to negative two. So our rise is negative two and the run is positive one. Because it's negative, let's go down by two. Our run is positive, so let's go right one. That's our second point. Step three, let's connect them. And there you go, that's our graph. To graph using standard form, the equations are written in this ax plus by equals c format, and there's really no other way to do this besides plugging in numbers. Technically, you just need two points to form a line, so why not choose the easiest points to find? So step one, let's find the x-intercept by plugging in y equals zero we'll get that 2x plus zero equals six, which is the same thing as 2x equals six. Let's just solve the linear equation. So dividing both sides by two, we get that x equals three. So that's actually our first point that we'll plot, three comma zero. Step two, let's find the y-intercept by plugging in x equals zero we'll get zero plus three y equals six, which is the same thing as three y equals six. 
Dividing both sides by three, we have that y equals two. So the second point that we'll plot is zero comma two. Step three, my favorite step. Let's just connect the dots like we're in kindergarten class and we'll have our graph. This is our second standard equation example and our final example for this video. So step one, plugging in y equals zero, we'll get that three x equals four and x equals four over three. This is a fraction, it's not a clean divide, but not everything in life is clean and easy, you guys. So our first point is four over three comma zero. Step two, plugging in x equals zero, we'll get negative two y equals four. y equals negative two, and our second point is zero comma negative two. Step three, connect the dots, and that's our graph. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If this video was a helpful tutorial on graphing linear equations, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more math and study videos. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what other topics to cover. See you in the next video.